Thank you very much. So it's lovely to be here. First of all, uh, why Echo Summit, why Siemens? Like Jen said, we have partnered for the last three years in London with a lot of success, basically for the UK audience, but also other countries. And for Eco Berlin, I had the idea, instead of talking about Siemens and how big Siemens is, maybe look into the technology and the trend-setting technologies that we are now implementing with solutions. And I have six use cases that we have deployed in the last year, which may be interesting for you to understand what a big comp and large company like Siemens is doing. So, look like it's not... Yes, so I have the first use case. It's about logistics and integrated truck guidance. All the platforms that we now use have to be integrated B2B. That's the very important thing. So we do not do business with consumers. We do business with other businesses. And of course, the integrated truck guidance system, which we just launched, uses a lot of technologies. But at the end, the benefit is for the truck driver and the user of trucks. And basically, what we use is a plate number recognition technology through a camera, which identifies the number plate, sends it out to a server, which is not within the trucker company owner, makes the processing of inf important information to the truck driver, gives them direction, and also coordinates the central logistics of a platform. So as an example, if you have trucks arriving to a site, be it a warehouse or a port or an arbor, you have trucks which are on time, which are a couple of minutes delayed or very delayed. And it's very important with logistics to have trucks coming exactly on the parking place that you want it. Otherwise, the owner loses money and lose efficiency. So we have devised this camera recognition of number plates. We give to the truck driver on real time the estimated time that they have to go to a certain gate. The gate is automated and guides the truck to a specific parking lot. Could it be directly to the warehouse or to a parking slot allocations and then through a subset of gates? This is an important go-to-market approach because we have the benefit of easiness of information to the truck driver with directions, but also to the operator, which saves, of course, logistics and time. The second use case I would like to mention is this integrated mobility platform. This is also a B2B, so it's not a B to consumer. It's an application to owners of large uh, urban infrastructure in transport. And of course, the user uses all kinds of applications. They use mobile phones, apps, and so on. This is a no-brainer, and I would say that 95% of people living in cities which use a means of transportation as such an, a vehicle of application. So what we have devised is Instead of looking at specific modes of transportation, we look at all modes of transportation. We look at, at trains, we look at cars, be it electrical or non-electrical. We look at, at bicycles, we look at parking spaces or parking houses, and we also look at the, the, the systems to control traffic systems. So we devise a platform for those owners of those platforms to make it easy for people to choose from A to B using multimodal. So you can have a tram, taking a tram from your house, change to the subway, and then take a bicycle, or take a taxi, or take a car. Because most travels within a city are not made in one modal. They are made in multimodal. It's very unusual for someone only to use the same bus, or the same subway, or the same tram. They have to exchange let's say, platforms to get from A to B. So this integrated platform mobility is now in the eyes of Siemens and it's in the eyes of municipalities and transport authorities. We will come up for sure in the next years with extraordinary advancements in this multimode transformation. The third use case I would like to bring is the Sea Traffic One. The Sea Traffic One is it's a one world premiere we just presented in the Inter Traffic Amsterdam 2016. It's the lowest consumption traffic system in the world. It uses between one and two watts of energy. So a city like Berlin could easily, if they make a rechange of the LED lights with our controllers, could easily get a, um, a savings of half a billion euros per year 
on a size compared to Berlin, if they do it 100%. So just imagine the potential for bringing this worldwide that we would save for all the cities in the world a huge amount of energy coming to the post lights and post traffic, but also for the buttons that people access the use of these systems. And of course, the important thing here is that the one watt technology is made of very simple components. So you have the touch button, which is made by partner companies, also on a 24 volt uh, technology. But the signaling of the lamps is one watt. So the whole system between the handheld button plus the signal traffic lights is between one and two watts. So this is the absolute world premiere. We think we are going to be successful in China, in the US, and in Europe. And we are starting with Germany. So attention to this new one watt technology is going to be a revolution in the cities. Coming now to the user, so we've been talking basically on business to business, but it's very important also to talk to the users. And users use bicycles. Everyone has a bicycle here, I would imagine, or even more. And how can we facilitate the use of bikes in the cities? So we have a huge problem, which is intersections of uh, bicycling traffic with cars or trucks. First of all, it's dangerous. Secondly, it's not efficient. So we have now an application, which we are now in a, in a starting mode to implement with the C-Bike app at the user, which is tied up with the controllers of the traffic lights and also with the authority which makes traffic lights work. And basically, what it does, it makes sure that when you are approaching an intersection, you're being tracked by GPS, and if there is enough bikes around the block, in certain areas you have free of way. That means the, 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 life, the traffic light will change from red to green when a pack of bicycles will come. And this is easily said, but very difficult to govern. That's why we have some pilots around the world, and of course, London now with the new highway for bicycles. This will be probably a world premiere. I'm now changing from mobility to energy, because we at Siemens do a lot of things. One of the smart uh, topics that I like to talk is about metering platforms and energy internet protocol. Yes. So we have acquired a company called eMeter in the US. And basically, what we try to do is combine the advantages of internet protocol addresses with energy management of the grid. So this is the new smart grid coming in a very strong way in the US. So it's not only about e-meters, but it's what we can do with the utilities to make sure that it's a connectivity between the e-meters in the, in the buildings but, and, and the use of efficient um, energy. And basically, I have an example here. That's my two last examples. One, that we use advanced metering infrastructure in a house, where you have a gas meter, electricity meter, and also a um, utility meter. So those are the three meters that we, a water meter, for example, that you have independently of the three authorities, you have those installed. We place a in-house controller, which is connected then through the web for applications for the utilities. The thing is, it's not about in installing the e-meter on the house or a gas meter or water meter. What do you do with that information? Only consumption is fine, but it does not really touch the critical point. The critical point is to make smart grid balancing. So we need to overcome the fluctuating uh, needs of energy into the houses. And this potential application could not address the big and large buildings like banks and other uh, large buildings in the, in, the, in, the, in the cities, but only small urban or nano-grid small urban houses. So a combination of having the meters with the right e-metering with IP protocol, which is accepted and commissioned by the authorities, which is very important because energy cannot be sold randomly. It has to be commissioned by the authority. This is the way to go. So we are working very hard with the American colleagues with the meter, but also with the IP protocol energy software platforms. And last but not least, we do more business to business. That's my last use case. And we have, of course, a platform, which you all know, 
uh, not only from Siemens, but it's also from other competitors, where we can really bring all the functionalities of a building into a platform on a supervisory uh, control system. And this is now the big thing in the US and in Europe. It will come also in China and India with the Smart Cities India, where we can control the cost of ownership of buildings in a way which makes sense for the operator, but also for the tenant. And the, the idea behind it is that the sensors that you have to put in buildings up front are the key element of success. If you do not have sensors, you cannot measure. In the crystal where I did my last presentation for Echo Summit, we have two sensors per square meter. Overall, we have over 3,000 sensors in the building. So it's not about the IT platform that you have on top to manage this information. It's about having the sensors built in during the construction phase. So this is a big change coming into the role that construction has to take a look, a very deep look about cost of ownership. And for that, we need sensors, not from Siemens, but from everywhere. We need to integrate those sensors with information. And then, of course, you can have the management building systems on top. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and wish you a, a very good stay at the Eco Summit Berlin. Thank you.